Hello everyone, I'm Dr. Shelly Vishwakarma and I'm working as a research fellow in Department of Security and Crime Sciences with Dr. Kevin Chetty. And uh, the title of my talk would be the learning salient features in radar microdoppler signatures using attention mechanism. So, uh, so the, the basic talk will revolve around how to, imp how to enhance the activity recognition in most of the indoor scenarios without increasing the computational burden on the, the algorithm we are using. So before moving on to the, the, the main topic, so as you know that the, the deep convolutional neural networks have been the new trends in, in radar community, and it has they have been used extensively for all the type of activity recognition, whether it is indoor scenario or it is indoor scenario for human activity recognition, or it's outdoor scenario for automobile uh, detection, drone detection, and all those classification scenarios. So, but so the the, tech, the deep convolutional neural networks have definitely uh, performed well over the standard machine learning algorithms. That's for sure. But there are a lot of scientific challenges which needs to be addressed before the technology become viable. So the major scientific channel challenges we have in radar community are first. As you all know that we have limited access to the, um, the RF data because we do not have a lot of publicly available data sets. So which is the main limitation because these deep neural networks require humongous amount of data for training. Second is like, suppose we have the access to the data, then the, the second challenge comes to the mind is which model, which deep neural network model to use for training the net, like, which deep neural network to be used for the classification, whether to use a pre-trained network, which are already available in the community, like the LXNet, VGG, and all other already available networks, or we, 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 we need to build our own network. So these are the, so this is another challenge, like which scientific model to use, because the end goal is to deploy it in the hardware prototype. So it, it depends a lot of a lot on the type of network we want to use. And then the next is like how to train a model, like which data to use, whether to use directly the raw data, or we can we we need to pre-process it and convert it to it to a form which would give better classification results. The final final challenge at the hardware part is that it's whether to use which like which network would be a lightweight network that can be you know deployed in in a real hardware prototype so if everything is perfectly working fine then the the last and the final challenge that comes to the mind is can we trust the the model we train so so that's that's the biggest in issue like everybody is now going to focus on can we trust the ai model which we trained so that that leads to another kind of uh, AI algorithms, which we call explainable AI. So that, that would be the future of uh, the AI. So in this talk, uh, what I'm going to uh, discuss is the, how can I improve the classification performance of a standard LXNet? Like I would be proposing certain modification to the existing network, this LXNet. And why I've chosen the LXNet is because it's a very lightweight model. And if I want to deploy it in the real world scenario, in, or like on the real hardware prototype, then it would be very, um, the, the performance would be real time. So, uh, so that's why I've chosen the LXNet for my study. So the, the, the existing studies revealed that the, the performance using the standard LXNet is quite low, which could be possibly due to the low interpretability of these signatures, microdoppler signatures. So yeah, especially at low frequency. So as you know, that if we increase the frequency of the rate, like the radar operation frequency, so we have very fine signatures, but as the frequency decreases, the resolution becomes very, very, very low. And that may reduce the classification capability of the network. So, so that's why, um, I'm proposing certain modifications which will improve the classification performance of the standard LXNet without increasing the computational burden on the 
the the network itself. So my scientific objective is to enhance the activity recognition using the LXNet only, but I'll embed a mechanism which is called attention mechanism. So the attention mechanism is is a is a is a small step towards the explainable AI, and uh, and that could be more that can be trusted more than just using the black box AI. So before discussing the the, the 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 proposed network, the proposed attention mechanism, I would first like to discuss the the, di the difference between the black box AI and the explainable AI. So as you can see, I'll just switch on my okay pointer. Yeah. So the difference between the black box AI and the explainable AI can be seen from this figure. So suppose we have a my, we have bunch of microdoppler signatures and we use them as a training data. We pass it through the model. We we pass it through the network and we we learn the model. Now we use this model to test a certain microdoppler signature and the output we get is just the risk score, just the score. So so based on the human intelligence, we just can't blindly trust this single number. So how can we increase the interpolate credibility of the networks is the explainable AI. So the how, how it would work is that we have the same set of signatures. We use it as our training data. We have a learning process. And we now this time, we have an explainable model, which will give certain number of um, observations. It's just not the score. It will, it will discuss about, do we have a periodic pattern? Do we have positive and negative frequencies? What is the strength of the signal? What is the pattern? What is the signature pattern? And what is the score? And so, so this would be given by the network in, in form of an explainable interface. So the end user, which is human, would be able to trust more. So that's why we, we call it as explainable AI. So, so I'm not able to solve everything within this explainable AI, but I've, I've just uh, taken a small step forward towards this, like jumping from black box AI to the explainable AI using this attention mechanism, and which I'll show in my further slides. So what is attention mechanism is, so the attention mechanism, what it does is that it focuses on the, the, the object part more and then suppresses the background. So what we can say is it creates a mask over the image and puts high value on the region where the target is placed and put 0, 0, 0, 0 everywhere else, like suppressing the background. So as you can see, so this is the attention, this is with attention mechanism. These are the results without attention mechanism. So you can see clearly see if I if I just take an example of the space heater. So the standard network, which is the ResNet 50, when it the image is passed through the network, if you look at the, the visualization, the network where the network focuses on, you can see it focuses on a very small part of the heater. Whereas the entire heat, if if the the network has to be an ideal network, it should focus entirely on the where the heater is placed. Likewise, if you consider the, the image of this bird, the standard network is focusing just on the head of the bird, not everywhere else, like the leg or the, the feathers. So, but if you look at the results from the uh, attention mechanism, you can clearly see the focus region now has increased and it's almost covering up the whole bird in the case of the bird. And if you look at the, spa the space heater, it's entirely focusing on the, the target scenario and by and suppressing the, the background. So this is this is what we call an attention mechanism. So I want I, I tried doing similar thing for the radar microdoppler signatures, but I did not use this network, but uh, I instead I propose certain mo modifications to the existing LX network. So how I embedded the uh, attention mechanism into this lightweight LXNet is, is shown in this figure. So, uh, so I had the standard LXNet. So what I did, 
I use the global features here and I took intermediate layer features. So the global features captures the end. So as we know that the deeper we go to the network, they kind of extract the, the global information that is the, the target territory of the image. So these global features can be used to enhance the in intermediate layer features. So what I did, I took the global features and then I took the intermediate layer features and I passed them through a, a, a mechanism which computed a new feature map, which is enhanced feature map. So now I use these global features to enhance the intermediate layer features. So these, these features are now intermediate layer features only, but these are refined features to the global feature maps. So at each and every, like I selected random, not randomly, I selected three uh, intermediate layers features and I refined them. Once I have refined these features, I aggregate, I aggregated all the features to form a single feature map, like the, like the vector of the feature map. Now this feature map, which is the aggregated sum of all the features have been used for prediction. So the, the, the mechanism, which is shown here in the sky blue color, this is called the global special attention module. Why I'm calling this as global special attention module? Because I'm using global features to refine the local features. So on the next slide, I'll discuss what, what it contains, like what, what does this global special attention module comprise of? So this is the schematic of the, the attention module I used. So I have some input feature, like it could be inter input features from any layer, any intermediate layer. So as you know that as we go down the network, the, the size of the, the features becomes small, smaller and smaller. So what we do is because the intermediate layer feature would have a different dimension compared to the global feature. So we first downsample the data and we uh, match the size of the global features with the intermediate layer features. So once we have the matched feature maps from both the layers, we pass them through the the global special attention module, and we, com we compute a mask. So that mask would have higher values at certain regions, and it would have very small val values, or you can, you can say that it's zero everywhere else. So what does that do is that it will, the zeros will cancel out the background, and the, the, the higher value in the activity region would enhance the features which, are, which we need to focus on. So this is how we compute a, refined feature map at any intermediate layer. So this is the refined feature map. The refined, so we, we use these refined feature maps at multiple different intermediate layers and then aggregate with the global features to do the final predictions. So what does this uh, attention module will do? It, it will improve the model sensitivity, obviously, and it will improve the prediction accuracy with minimum computational overhead. So, so what does this global attention module consist of is this. So we have a, a down sample intermediate feature map. We have the global feature map. So what we do is we pass both of them through certain kind of filters. Like for this case, we use average, we use averaging filter and then we use the max filters. So we pass them through this and we combine, we correlate the, the global feature with the local feature and add them together and pass through some nonlinear activation functions. So this way, similarly we do for the averaging. So what it does is that wherever the global features are focusing on the activity region, it will force the local features to force on those certain regions. Like because local features cannot capture the whole activity region, region on if they are not refined. So the global feature kind of act as, you know, to correlate them and just emphasize more on the local features. So this way we, we finally get a mask. This mask is then multiplied with the original features and the resulting mask, the resulting feature maps are the refined feature maps. So now we have certain regions which are highlighted more and then we have certain regions which are suppressed. So, so in order to test this um, uh, attention enhanced LXNet, we used a publicly available radar data set, which was acquired from 
three synchronized RF sensors, one at 77 gigahertz, 24 gigahertz, and 10 gigahertz. The number of activities considered for the study were 11, and these basically comprised of um, uh, common human activities, which, which are generally found in any indoor home setting scenarios. And we also, the, the activities also had some special activities like the falling down motion, walking, um, walking on the toes and crawling, all other these, all these activities. And uh, all the radar settings were monostatic radars. And uh, so, so, so uh, note that I use one, if I train the network using one frequency, then I tested the network with the same frequency. I did not do the cross frequency classification yet, which is, so that is a part of my future research. But this research is just single, the same frequency is used for both training and testing. So these are the classification results. Uh, although I had uh, detailed results, I have detailed results, but I'm not presented in this, uh, these slides because um, it's, 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 it's given this kind of same message which these results will give. So uh, this is the attention enhanced LXNet classification results for 77 gigahertz, 24 gigahertz, and 10 gigahertz. So I have presented a baseline accuracy using the, the standard LXNet. It's the five-fold cross-validation results. So for each of these frequencies, I got these classification results. Then I modified the standard LXNet and embedded the attention mechanism into it and computed again the five-fold cross-validation performance. And as you can see from the results, uh, for, for all the frequency cases, the performance is at least 3% greater than the baseline, like if we do not use any attention mechanism at all. So, so the, the improvement over the standard LXNet is presented in the brackets. You can see this is presented in the bracket and in color is highlighted as in red color. So for the 77 gigahertz, it's 4% greater than that. And it's for 24 gigahertz, it's almost 5%. And for 10 gigahertz, it's 3%. And that the reason could be for the lower performance in this case could be because the, the resolution of the signatures are, is already low compared to the, the other two frequencies. So we expect the, the network to perform um, like not up to that level as it can perform for the higher frequencies. Next, we challenged the network and we did the four-fold classification accuracy and we repeated the process for all the frequencies. As expected for the lower frequency, the performance will degrade further then threefold and finally with twofold. What does the twofold mean? We have is 50% for training and 50% for text testing. And that's very challenging scenario. So for higher frequency, we can still observe the performance improvement over 1.5% and it's 2% for the 24 gigahertz case. But if you look at the 10 gigahertz case, the performance is almost similar with what we got from the baseline. So, and that that's, possibly due to the low resolution of the signatures. Then what we did is, like you see that, uh, you can see that I have modified the, the signatures at different layers. So if I do not modify the signatures and directly in aggregate these signatures together, directly integrate without any attention mechanism. So what we can see is the improvement performance there is improvement in the performance because we are aggregating multiple features from different layers, but the performance is not that significant, significant compared to what we got in the previous case. I just wanted to, uh, through these, this uh, study, I just wanted to see whether the improvement in the performance is due to the aggregation of the features or it's, it's actually due to the attention mechanism. So, so from the results, we can see the performance improvement is definitely due to more due to the attention mechanism and less due to the aggregation. So that proves our hypothesis, uh, our assumption that the attention will um, improve the, will enhance the activity recognition performance. So uh, just to show the 
network visualization like if i do not use any attention mechanism how would the feature map would look like and if i use the attention mechanism then how would the refined feature map would look like like where the network would focus on so these are the network visual visualization at 77 gigahertz so these are the uh, micro doppler signatures so if i directly use the raw feature map you can see that the, this this red region is the the region where the network focuses on to give the prediction means actually use these regions to actually predict the activity whereas if you look at this feature map the refined feature map the network uses like the lx enhanced like the um, attention enhanced lxnet uses this activity region to give the predictions as you can clearly see it's it's basically focusing more on the activity region compared to this case likewise for other layers you can see the raw feature map at convolutional layer 3 it's just focusing on this part using just this part you can predict you cannot predict whether it's a walking motion or it's a standing up sitting down motion most probably if if the network is focusing on this small region it might say the activity is just standing up from the chair because it looks like that so it it might lead to wrong predictions whereas if i use the refined feature map it's it's better able to focus on the entire activity region similarly for the final convolution like the fourth convolutional intermediate layer it's definitely focusing on the activity region so if i use directly these feature maps for prediction the performance is going to be lower compared to if i use these signatures so so we did similar thing for the 24 gigahertz radar data and we we could see the the prediction regions is the net these are the network visualization which which network used for predicting the activity and this is for the 10 gigahertz radar so so the overall what we can see is that the the attention mechanism highlights the regions in the rf signatures well and suppress the irrelevant background regions these 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 maps are called the saliency maps which 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 dictates which input which part of the signal affects the output prediction so definitely what we can see is that attention enhanced lxnet has very you know great potential in using in low end devices because it's a very lightweight network and the, the proposed modifications are not adding too much uh, computational burden on the network itself so the conclusion is that that using the attention mechanism we get an improvement in the network prediction by 4% and that too without increasing the computational burden the activation uh, map visualization show that the detected region contribute the most to the predicted class it highly agrees with the region of interest like it's if it's it's entirely focusing on the activity region only and not on the such on not on certain background and another and the last conclusion is that the if we have it's it's not just the lx net if we design our own network also and if we embed the attention mechanism into it then it will definitely have great potential in improving the overall performance of the network and it could be used for uh, real time classification performance in low end devices so uh, my so this was part of the my research the current research and uh, my future research would focus on so you know so so the attention mechanism would always be a part of my classification network testing and everything but bef but before doing the classification i have uh, another i want to address another problem set of problems which exist in still exist in the radar community so which is the the 3d indoor scene monitoring using opportunistic rf emissions from wifi access point what what do i mean by that is that uh, in most uh, applications if you see that the human activity recognition scenarios there is only one human present at a time and we classify only the the activity of a single human 
there are very less number of studies which actually do multi-target classification scenarios. Like if there are three humans present in the same room and they are doing certain activities, so so the the network should be able to predict. There is human one, he's doing this activity, human two doing this activity, and human three doing this activity. So, so in order to address that, that problem, so what people have done is they have either you, you can do it by increasing the computational, uh, by adding the hardware complexity, like you can add multiple antennas, receiving antennas to have the direction of arrival information. You can have wide bandwidth for the, if you want to distinguish it in the range domain and the Doppler domain itself. So, so that's the kind of, uh, the problems uh, I want to address in the future, and this is the thing. So what what? So if you look at this normal scene, so the rate the uh, the sensor should be able to not only predict the activity, it should be able to predict the context all context also, like what we we would like to infer from. So this is the scene. So we can see there is a human walking away with three bags. This is just a simple demonstration. This is not the actual thing I want to address. It's just a simple demonstration and just wanted to discuss it. So there is a person B looking at, looking at person C and there's a person C which is playing a chord and he is having a bag and something like this. So this is the indoor scene understanding from the vision point of view. We cannot have exactly the same thing from the RF point of view, but can we get closer to something which the vision cameras can do? So that's my, uh, the next goal is the multi-class recognition scenarios. If we have multiple humans, can we have, can we have the, the explainable interface, which can clearly say this is the human one doing this thing and he's interacting with the another, some kind of gestures or everything included within the RF sensing scenario. So idea is like the first step Towards this goal, I've thought of is that uh, using us existing excess instruments millimeter wave radar. So we have a radar and it would give a point cloud model. So because this radar got has already got uh, range ranging capabilities, it, it has got multiple receiving antennas for uh, DOA differentiation and it's it's high frequency will have a better Doppler resolution. So I'll just uh, test my, I just want to do my research starting with this readily available uh, millimeter wave radar and generate the point cloud human models from, and then using these point cloud models to infer or just to put a skeleton on top of these uh, point clouds to see how, how many humans are there in the indoor, indoor scenarios scenario and uh, how are they like tracking them over a long period of time. So this is something I want to do in the future. And the ultimate goal would be to replace this uh, Texas Instruments millimeter wave radar with the opportunistic RF signals. That is the future Wi-Fi standard is going to be 60 gigahertz. So the 60 gigahertz Wi-Fi standard would, would offer very good bandwidth. It would, it would have multi antenna system and because the frequency is very high it would definitely offer good doppler resolution so the the, the same thing i would replicate it to the will transfer it to the opportunistic rf signals using the wi-fi access points so the technology would be a passive radar technology instead of the active radar technology so because the passive radar technology got some advantages like the reduced uh, infrastructure cost and all those things so that is the future research because the 60 gigahertz Wi-Fi chipsets are not readily available yet. There are certain chipsets, but not extensively tested as this TI's MF wave radar. So the strategy would be, uh, it's, it's a simple demonstration in outdoor scenario I've, I've presented here, but the future, the, my goal would be the indoor scenario and that would be specifically focusing on the human detections. So if you see that this, this is the kind of point cloud we get from uh, millimeter wave radar. So this is a demonstration in outdoor scenario. And it's, it's, a, it's a point cloud model from the 
car, which a millimeter wave radar, that is PI's radar captured. So, so once we have the 3D point cloud from the sensor, we can generate the corresponding 2D map. And from the corresponding 2D map, what we can do is we can generate a contour of this 2D point cloud image to have the shape feature of the target. Like if it was a car, then it should, the ultimate goal is to have a point cloud model, which would, which would give a contour of 2D point cloud image as a car so that it's more interpretable and it's, it's, it's what something we can trust. So I want to do something some exactly like this only, but for the human. So even if I have four humans present in the room, then I would have a corresponding contour plot of those humans in this scenario. And it should be a 3D image and it should have a human body. So that would be more intuitive and, and that would be more trustable. Yeah, that, so this was part of my future research. That was all. Thank you for attending my talk. And if you have any questions, please be, feel free to ask.